and enlightenment emerging from this place and perhaps ideas to carry forward. Um, academia and industry, when you hear of this, they often uh, uh, see it off as if they are opposites, uh, antagonistic. Uh, fortunately, in the, in the field of design, um, design is a practice and a profession, so many people in academia are from industry or academics practice in industry, so that there isn't that much of a gap. Nevertheless, the goals of academia and industry tend to be a little different. Academia is about education, building a better human being, actualizing individuals. Industry is about getting the job done. Uh, often the beef that uh, the industry has about academia We're going to get a wide range of perspectives here today. Uh, the way we're going to do this is each of the speakers here is going to speak for a couple of minutes uh, about their perspective, and then we're going to go have a second round. And perhaps the third round, if we have time, then we'll throw this open to not long commentaries, read first questions, uh, which our panelists here will uh, seek to address. Okay? Does that work? All right, let's get going. Go ahead, just. Uh, Oh, let's start from the other end. Very brief introduction and then get into uh, your perspective. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, I'm Karsha from MIT Institute of Design. And uh, I think we are a premier institute. And the industry, both global and uh, local, is flooded with our students. Is That's what we like to believe at the moment. So, yes, uh, we are here to share and receive inputs and whatever shortcomings that you feel from your side, we'd love to be able to bridge the gap. Hi, I'm Priyanka. I run a company called Fractaling Design Studio. And uh, we are rapidly growing. And uh, the thing is that we keep interviewing uh, freshers from college day in and day out. And so I have only two main points which I want to make here. Uh, one is that we, uh, the, the UX industry, UX UI industry is changing very rapidly. And right from the inception of the curriculum itself, if we can make a difference in a way that the industry is involved uh, in shaping up that curriculum, because the industry is changing so fast, the academics need to be updated with that. So that is one thing that uh, you know it, it should be inculcated. And the merging between you know uh, industry people going for juries uh, in the uh, and bringing in that industry perspective to, for the students, and as well as the uh, professors coming to the industry and taking some bit of uh, knowledge from there. So that is one. And the second thing, I think when we interview people, what comes out very strongly is the design talking, the confidence is something which uh, the college can play a very important role, which currently we feel is a little uh, slack. So that is the two main points which I want to uh, mention. Hi, I'm Chandni. Uh, I am studying interaction design at IDC, IIT Bombay. And uh, I'm also an architect. Um, just a few points, maybe from the postgraduate uh, design education point of view, uh, a few things that pro uh, I'd like to highlight uh, is that students come in at the postgraduate level from a variety of backgrounds. There are a lot of engineers. It's a good mixture. But uh, so even though it's postgraduate level education, um, uh, you, you, the starting level is quite, uh, uh, it's diverse, so everybody uh, needs to catch up. So that's a challenge in terms of uh, designing the curriculum itself. How do you design a curriculum that, that caters to uh, graduate designers, graphic designers, as well as engineers? And uh, the, the duration of a course is typically two years, and that's uh, commonly felt that it's extremely short uh, for, for someone to um, learn to design. and. Um, uh, the one good thing about uh, my school is that it's largely multidisciplinary. Uh, it's uh, this, although there are dif uh, distinct disciplines like interaction design and communication design and animation, uh, uh, but we also work to, to work together. The courses are all overlapping, and you could take electives. So the interdisciplinary aspect is uh, uh, quite a positive aspect. And, uh, and about being industry ready, uh, I think uh, my point of view is that uh, any job, any role has a certain learning period associated with it. So even if you're switching between jobs, there's a 
uh, depending on the job, there's going, you're going to have to take some time to learn. So uh, it's it's difficult for a student to uh, to come out of an educational institute uh, with being ready to start working on the on day one. So uh, it and and also education is not designed to uh, to to create um, uh, people who can take on roles. It's more about um, um, training designers who will be able to take on or adapt to, to any role that comes their way. Yeah. Hi. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Shitej Anand. Um, I kind of finally made the shift towards uh, academia after almost a decade in the industry. And uh, what has been interesting in my this uh, journey of design education is spending time in trying to teach design to school kids, to college graduates, to college students, to working professionals. And uh, that's a very interesting, uh, uh, you know, gamut of uh, audience that you have because for the working professional, the understanding of design could be very different as compared to if you're in a design school or if you're in an engineering school or if you're in a school like, you know, K-12 education and, and maybe even middle school and high school. So um, for the past uh, three years or so, I think I've spent a lot of time in understanding these different aspects of design education, bringing in my vast experience of working in the industry, you know, working in different service industry, product industry, working with a lot of startups. So kind of because we felt the need of a lot of uh, design talent being uh, required in different uh, disciplines, in different projects, in different companies, uh, the, the constant understanding that I had developed then was that we need to actually have more people studying design. And um, as a result of which, of course, the shift to the academy apart. And uh, in particular, it's wonderful to see today uh, when we're talking about industry academy fusion because uh, we really need to understand both sides of the perspective, right? Both sides of the coin in terms of uh, what is required. Um, and uh, for me, the constant struggle that has been, and I think I would like to open that to everybody in the thing in the audience today, and I think a lot of my panelists will agree as well. Uh, this constant uh, struggle to get quality teachers, and. Uh, you know, especially in design, because as uh, Murli was mentioning, uh, it's about, as a designer, you also have some amount of practice going on alongside. One strong request from my side is to have more people becoming teachers, you know, when you're in the industry. And I'm sure, you know, we can have more discussion on that as well. Thank you. Uh, Atul Manohar, I manage a very small uh, team of UX designers uh, at Informatica. Uh, actually, in two minutes, let me uh, quickly give you a very interesting story that I have built uh, while I was walking up. Imagine UX in India would have been a country and the history of this country would look uh, pre precisely like this. Uh, we primarily serve an industry called information technology industry and IT industry in India is about 20 years old, uh, little less or more. Uh, in the industry started with that whole story of outsourcing, then giving services, service, services becoming more important, specialized services, and then developing products also. Now that we are era in uh, wherein our, our guys are actually coming up with startups, our own ideas, our own products for our own products. So similarly, on the other side, on the professional side, we started with usability engineering, wherein poking the problems in a product to uh, maybe interaction design wherein I design the whole set of interactions to now that we have started moving into user experience, we design the whole experience and now that we are conceptualizing the products, right? So that's the way the professionals uh, and the industry is kind of traversing in the history. Let's try and see on the academia side. On the academia side again, uh, probably in the time of the, the usability era, Academia was trying to figure out whether I should have some kind of a course to that. And they started coming up with some kind of a master's course. Uh, by the time industry moved on to, I mean, the professionals moved on to the user, the interaction design part. Slowly, the academia started saying, okay, I have a two, two years master's degree course. Uh, and the professionals have moved to the uh, slightly more strategic positions of designing things. Academia is also catching up saying that, no, I need a bachelor's degree, which needs four plus two years of design education. Uh, so now at this moment of time in history, this nation 
there are four type of uh, stakeholders in the industry there are business decision makers and the professionals like all of us in the academia side there are teachers and the students am i making sense so everybody is at a stage wherein industry is catching up uh, in the industry entrepreneurs are starting up with new ideas for our own people for our own country uh, designers are sitting next to them uh, shoulder to shoulder industry uh, is kind of trying to catch up with that movement uh, probably is academy is also catching up over there and there might be some bit of gaps in these two so that's precisely what we might even uh, look at discussing now hi uh, i am salim ahmed from cpdm center for product design and manufacturing uh, iac bangalore uh, i'm going to give a small uh, you know a bit of uh, points on the history of your ux design you know ux design as a field is in its infancy even now you know it is perceived to be part of it industry and uh, ux design is about 15 years old you can say you know don norman you know coined this uh, word user experience about uh, you know in the late 90s and uh, ever since this has been catching on this has its roots in ergonomics and human factors which has been part of industrial design for the last about 60 years or so so though this being talked as ux design now it has been into design you know for well over 60 years you know the ulm school of design uh, in germany which propagated this ergonomics in a henry dreifers you know who made a great contribution into ergonomics and made that uh, part of industrial design about 60 years ago all these things now are you know uh, expanding into this field uh, ux design there are you know about 350 uh, sorry 350000 engineers graduating annually in india and uh, mckinsey report says there are only about 25% of them are employable so what happens the industry trains them to become useful and uh, though they are not straight away you know being useful out of the college and there is a big gap industry academia gap is existing and this will exist my point is it is still in, in in its infancy and it is getting matured to get this fully matured may take couple of decades and uh, till then the gap will be existing and there will be constant approach market driven approach to bridge the gap I'm Samir from Yuge Designs. Um, controversial, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we decided that we'll have some spice. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good part is uh, that uh, there are a lot of schools coming up for design, and the design awareness in the country has been growing. Not just uh, you know pressure from the students. but uh, there's also this pressure from industry to have more and more designers and so the awareness is growing and therefore there are a lot of schools that are coming up also the good part is you know progressively what we are seeing in the last 8 10 years um that students are learning the techniques very well now they are well equipped to at least you know do information architecture card sorting and wire frames and things like that so that's the good part the bad part there is still a gap <laughs> and the gap is widening right the industry is running in different directions the needs of entrepreneurs and startups are coming up very fast and you're still doing wire frames 
So that's again, the, that's the bad part. The ugly part is that industry is very well equipped to kind of come and contribute to academia, but they are not interested. I'm sorry, but they are interested in doing business and not teaching students. Open to the forum. Great, great. Good question. Go on. To directly address this, uh, I don't, I can't speak for the other institutes, but at MIT we have a wonderful uh, process where we do, in, you know, involve people from the industry, and we have live projects as a part of class uh, exercises uh, where we invite people from the industry, like yourself, and we take on your project. So uh, I think this is a perfect forum for me to invite uh, startups and people who want, you know, looking for designers, uh, we just probably give your uh, project to a class of 50 students and you will get 50 design solutions. So, uh, so that's answering your question directly. Uh, we're not asking you to teach them, but yes, please come and be a part of our, uh, the exercise while it's going on, given your inputs. Like a typical, you know, it's like a real world situation where you would be briefing your designer you would be even be uh, just briefing our students and it, it adds to their design learning, it adds to their portfolio and they're probably almost like, well, let's say, you know, one step already in the industry uh, while they are learning. And this is an ongoing process at MIT Institute of Design and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that there is a, there's this huge gap which is mentioned because in fact we're constantly inviting industry people. So yes, this is a platform for uh, me to invite all of you from, from, from on behalf of my institute. That most welcome with your projects and you know and, and solutions that you require for your new startups and clinics that you have in mind. Uh, Sabir, I would uh, like to disagree with you that people don't have uh, time to give to academics. Uh, in fact, uh, we are on the panel of Parson Schools of Designs for shaping up their curr curriculum, and it really doesn't take that much time. So it just takes the, uh, you know, the drive to go ahead and do it. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, business is foremost and it is important. But at the same time, there is a responsibility for us to, you know, it, it is in effect beneficial for us as industry people if the students coming out are, you know, straight away ready for the job. So if we can contribute to that and if we can take some time out, I think we should go ahead and do it. So yes, it is an ugly truth, but I think it's not very difficult to be achieved. Chandi, you have any thoughts on that? I, I think it's difficult to say industry ready. So UX uh, is a very specific, uh, narrow sort of, of, uh, of, I wouldn't call it a field, but uh, even a profession. Um, so design schools, I think, are very, uh, uh, very varied sort of skill sets involved in uh, in a design and education. So uh, when a student starts out, they probably it's not a good idea, in fact, to uh, uh, to sort of make a student choose exactly what sort of job they would want to uh, work in at the end of their uh, education. So uh, it it would be a little I, I'm 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 a little skeptical about the idea of. Um, industry you know influencing uh, the curriculum so you get exactly the sort of designers who can do the uh, work that industry requires that might not be a good idea okay. so this? yeah so um, i probably was in the same situation as uh, samir a few years ago you know like how do you really get it, uh, associated i think many people in the audience here uh, might have the same concern you know like i have my startups to run i have my businesses to run uh, i really cannot spend the time at institutes the, the easy way out is, of course, to just, uh, okay, as uh, uh, ma'am uh, on the left mentioned, uh, you know, give a project to the institute and say, okay, my part of the responsibility is giving the project to the institute and uh, uh, they will, of course, take care of it, get the projects done, etc., etc. Over the past three or four years since I've worked with a lot of students, you end up understanding student psychology a lot more than sitting in the industry, right? One of the things that has been really interesting is Students take feedback from industry people much more seriously than from academic people. The fact that there is this client relationship that starts getting evolved within the student itself 
they end up taking those feedbacks, guidance much more seriously. So um, at, at the school that I, you know, uh, like all the design, North Atlantic. Yeah. So, um, so there are different ways in which you can get involved. So one, of course, is giving projects, doing workshops, doing lectures, attending feedback sessions, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not just about just giving the project and being done with it. Uh, let me open my here, book of history again and say, as I have tried to illustrate, the gap is inevitable and the gap is natural. There is nothing wrong in the gap at such. Uh, the only difference is now that we are looking at most of these academic institutes also as an industry, right? So it has to sustain itself. Uh, primarily, a couple of very nice examples from the data space that I work for are uh, coming from Stanford University and uh, uh, maybe the MIT of US, wherein research scholars, uh, after completing their thesis, have come up with an innovative product in the data space. So I don't know why, but that is not so much happening in India. We have equal talent, we have equal uh, uh, industry interest, and the teachers are also fabulous. So I don't know why uh, MIT can produce some kind of a crazy uh, startup, uh, very, very technical in nature, which is actually a produce of a PhD thesis. And I don't know. I don't know any more examples from Indian universities likewise. Uh, I would like to disagree with uh, Chandni. You know, she said that you know, UX is narrow. And, uh, but I look at it as a very wide thing. You know, I look at it as a holistic uh, thing. Uh, because UX is addressing the physical aspects, the mental aspects, the emotional aspects. It is giving a holistic approach to design. And uh, that means it is covering a big spectrum, wide spectrum of areas uh, in, its, in its fold. So the, you know, this as a discipline will take long time to mature. You know, I expect about two to three decades for it to come to some state where the demand supply gets to close to equilibrium, you know. Till then, the gap is expected to be there. And, you know, th that is a challenge. And there should be constant interaction between industry and academia. You know, uh, people from in the industry come and, you know, be, uh, you know, be part of the academia as part-time uh, faculty or, you know, get, uh, give projects to, uh, you know, the institutes. And faculty, you know, part-time, employees in industry you know or uh, you know giving consultancy will kind of narrow the gap you know Sorry. yeah so I'll just make one quick point about the gap, right? Uh, what we are seeing is the gap is not so much of the techniques and tools that we used to see earlier, but it's more of the softer skills and design management now, which is getting more and more important. And as you know, design leaders, we all know how important it is to actually stand in front of 50 stakeholders and sell the design rather than actually doing the design. And is that in the curriculum? I don't think so. And I would again like to make a point <laughs> that, you know, I've studied in the US and I'm sure there are many people who've studied outside, right? There is a very strong research base uh, in all those institutions which is directly applied research and the research actually is being used by the industry. Where is that research from academia that we can use? I would want to use something that is very useful as a new technique or tool or research in, in my work. I would like to give something more, but is it coming from there? No. So are we equipped? We are not because we are busy making money. <laughs> okay, what I'm gonna do now is uh, throw this open. <laughs> throw this open to the, the audience and uh, we have, let me, I'll, sure. over here. We have a whole bunch of hands. That's the first one I saw, so you're going to be the first. And then uh, uh, if, you, if you want it to be addressed by a specific panelist, say so, otherwise, you know, leave it open to anyone. Uh, and keep it brief, not a comment, just a very brief question, okay? I have, uh, yeah, I'm happy to hear from anybody who has a comment on this. Oh, what's your name, which institution, if that's okay, and then? Okay. 
What's a question? Yes. Uh, my name is Adi Lakshmi. I'm not a student. I'm a, a working professional. I okay. work in the U.S. and I studied outside of India. I have a question. We've been hearing a lot about the gap in the industry in academia. Uh, have you considered anything like a professional master's program or something of that sort where, uh, similar to what you were saying, I think about um, um, it, people from industry coming and giving you projects, I would actually say instead of j that just being a class project, uh, a professional master's is something where uh, a company would tie up with uh, uh, an institute for a longer period of time, maybe a few months. A working project that yes. actually delivers results. Yes, okay. exactly. So and that's the core of the, um, core of the professional masters. And that's how students learn what okay. techniques or uh, right. the, the theory in, in terms of applying to a real project. Well, okay, thank you. So uh, has academia in India considered having these professional clinic, clinical kind of uh, projects where they actually work on real problems for industry? Has that's a very nice point that you brought up and we'll definitely take it, you know, uh, I'll take it with you outside. Mm. Uh, yes, we do have, uh, we are touching that at some ex to some extent when we have internship programs and our students intern, you know, for about a month or a period of two months and that project is, a, is also mentored both by, uh, you know, the faculty as well as an external uh, mentor, the, the industry mentor. So we do, uh, the student gets a, complete, you know, different, uh, you know, view and you get the real experience and it, it, they come back to us for all the research and, you know, just kind of a checkpoint as, as to everything. Uh, yes, but I like this idea of, you know, having a six month incubation period with a company. That would be a perfect, you know, kind of an engagement period. I think you need that enough time. And coming back to the research and, you know, the, the, what he was talking about, yes, uh, I guess when we have these kind of long projects, uh, you know, probably we need to just put them up on a platform and share with the rest of the world. So yes, we could have more people and more companies coming up too. That was really nice, very good point. Thank you. Anybody else wants to address that? Are you okay with that? Okay, uh, next question. Yes, go ahead. Hi, uh, I'm the Banshu from National Institute of Design, okay. uh, Ahmedabad. And uh, so we always have heard of this uh, thing like abstract and concrete. Okay, so when we are going into the abstract field, we let lose our horses and explore and then come to something concrete, cutting down on things. So I feel like academia that we are talking about lets us to explore and industry tries to bring down to, so I think there should... So what's should, the question? The question is that I feel that this bridge should be there and uh, why to... now? Bridge, like why okay. to bring both together? So, so let there's, us be there's the a natural gap, and that's the way these two th in, uh, things are. Yeah. Why should there? Why should there not be a yeah. gap? What's wrong yeah. with? Okay, go ahead. Any anybody wants to? Why do we have a problem with the gap? Uh, actually, I completely agree with you. The gap hmm. is completely natural. Hmm. It is there to stay. Is the way you look at the gap. For example, a couple of uh, internship projects we have done. And uh, from the industry side, always they'll crib that if at all there is an intern working with my team, it, there is a lot of babysitting, I invest a lot. And equally, the student side would also complain saying that there are just too many constraints to work for, you know. And it's very hard for me to fit in my uh, free flow thinking into a very structured process. But I think the beauty of this, uh, the gap is the student has to swim that gap anyways on his own, right? Earlier it was a free flowing, he could just choose what he wants to design, whereas in an industry, uh, he'll have to address one particular problem. And the beauty of the whole process of learning is having that ca gap itself. So no pain, no gain. So they learn no through, pain, no gain. through suffering, Absolutely. salvation yeah. through suffering. So how easy, how, how difficult or easy is it for both the sides to jump into that pain? Industry does go uh, one step further saying that, hey, I don't mind paying this guy, these three interns, their stipend for six months, and I don't expect anything out of that. Fairly enough. So similarly, I mean, it should be a both side pain. It should not be a one side pain for sure. Anyone else? Yeah. Yes. I would like to make a point. I think there is this perception that uh, industry tries tries to cur cur curtail things, and it is a very concrete stuff which we are trying to make. But in all cases, it is not true. Yes, I mean, I completely agree to your point that in the college, you should be allowed to explore. You should, you know, that is how the thinking opens, and it should not be curtailed at that uh, level. But there is. Uh, in the industry also when you come, you have projects which in which you explore, you are allowed to do 
uh, the uh, you know whatever you want to do to create a difference in the uh, community or the society so it's not a curtailing so that perception of curtailing by the industry I think is kind of wrong and just bringing the perspective of the industry into whatever projects you're doing might make a difference so are you saying that perhaps that there's this erroneous perception that exists and if it exists perhaps industry has not done enough to erase this perception they should or should not what do you think anybody yeah, I, I'd like to address that, yeah. uh, you know, there's a difference between dreams and reality. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you, it's good that, you know, you learn blue sky thinking and the project goes on and on. Reality doesn't talk like that. There are deliverables, there's time commitments and there's money and there's effort. And that's the reality of the industry. Today, tomorrow, yesterday as well. I'm saying that, you know, while you teach blue sky thinking, which is good to expand your horizons, why not also teach that there is something called time and effort? There is a timeline to everything and there's cost to everything. Okay. That is not being taught. Right. Thank you. Uh, this gentleman, yes, go ahead. Uh, is there, should we give it one? Yeah. Hang on, here. Hi, my <coughs> name is Sudhish Sharma. I'm a designer. Um, I sometimes teach uh, as well, and I write a lot. Okay, um, I have first some comments to make. No, a quick question, Sudhir. We don't no, have enough I'm, time. No, I'm going to make a comment. Okay. Because, and you have to listen to it. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't think we should. Can I just make a perspective? Sudhir uh, has a pool magazine which he runs, and yeah. he's in. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. No, I, I don't think we should mis misuse the stage. So anyway, so my uh, perspective is that we are treating the design education like uh, it used to be, you know, producing engineers earlier, mm. preparing people for manufacturing industry. So we need to prepare people who can just go and, thank you, <coughs> get onto assembly lines and start producing, you know, um, bikes and motorcycles and cars. Design and creative industries work in a different way. And I, I think, yeah. Um, we, the way we need to look at that is uh, there is a gap between academia and, and industry and I feel the gap has to be on the reverse side. Academia has to lead the industry, not being led by the industry. There's a problem in Indian situation here. Um, if you see design in India, we, <coughs> we are celebrating 60th year of design in India uh, this year or last year. Design has been in India before uh, people know what design is. A few institutions have been around. UX has come into India um, two years back, three years back, I don't know, you guys would know. Um, and it's being led by the industry. So the academia, like many of the colleges you are representing, are just trying to fill in the gaps so that more and more people can be employed by the industry. And that, I think I completely agree with what Samir is saying. We're producing people, giving them skills and tools so that they can go and get jobs. Okay, that's not the role of the academy. Academia needs to lead the industry. If you actually see where all this is coming from, um, people who who've been educated uh, outside, the the research part. I, I think that was very valid and touched upon. the The research part is what is leading the industry. I, I feel that part is completely missing from from our education here. I I have a big problem with. Okay. 30 seconds. I haven't finished it. Yes. I have a big problem with the, our, you know, we are confusing education with training. That's something which we should not do. Training is, is fair, you know, six months course, two months, two years course, whatever. Train people, plug them in, get them jobs. That's, that's a big uh, responsibility we have uh, in a country with so many people. We should do that. <clears throat> but I feel the academy, academia has to lead uh, the industry and I find a problem there the kind of faculty which is joining the design education I, I believe and I can guarantee that none of you are actually uh, UX trained people you've been into UX because of your experience right um, we we trying to now make people who are UX trained and what would they do they would do UX when they go out and would UX be needed in two years time we don't know so the, I'll have to stop yeah, okay, here. Stop. Yeah, okay. Anybody wants to address this, the key issue being academia 
should lead industry? Is it possible for academia to lead industry if industry is at the leading edge? Is there a way in which industry can participate in, with academia in helping academia lead? Or is there a different perspective that you have? I have just one thing to and I completely agree with uh, Sudhir's points that it has to lead. But the, but the fact of the matter is that if you go abroad and study, you will see and find that you know there is there is this difference in the curriculum in the in the way teaching is being carried out in institutes in India. And there is a huge difference, mm -hmm. and that is why you see people uh, who are, who have studied abroad, and when they come back, they are instantly. Uh, you resonate with them, they bring something new to the table. Okay. Uh, so that is what leading by uh, academia, I think, is what you're trying to say. And that, I think, in India, we, as uh, you know, people who are uh, employing and you ha who have people joining us, have not found from students coming from India itself. And I, okay. I, I think I completely agree to that point. Okay. That and can anybody else, Shitis? Um Just to quickly, uh, just 30 seconds on it, I think, uh, uh, Looking at the, the academia side as well, uh, I think it's also um, the student industry in India is very driven by this world called placements. Okay. And that is, you know, addressing a lot of, uh, causing a lot of problems as well because you want the academia to kind of maintain their gap and maintain their abstractness, mm -hmm. but at the same time the students are also concerned about placements and they really want those placements. So uh -huh. the parents, when they start the interviews for, for, for applications for the schools, First thing they ask is what's the placement of your college is, rather than asking whether you're making him a good designer or not. Okay. So that's one of the bigger factors that I think we also need to have a separate panel discussion probably later on. Is that a reality you're willing to accept? Um, and work around it? Yeah, I think so. There are different working around of it. You know, thankfully, entrepreneurship has given this huge boost to that, that the notion that okay, it's not just about, um, about the placements and you can actually go ahead and be, be your you know, unique designer in whatever, whatever is your own capacity mm -hmm. and then start your own stuff and you know, really drive with you what your own vision of design is. Okay. But again, you know, the, again, it's another counseling for the parent session because they don't understand this notion of entrepreneurship in the first place at all. So again, you know, it's, it's, it's a more complex, wicked problem as we say in design. Okay. It's not just very as simple as it sounds. Atul, Salim, uh, Samir, any thoughts on that? Uh, interestingly, that gap we are talking about is not a river full of piranhas always. Uh, there is another beautiful island over there called research and uh, a lot of, I mean, frankly, in my mind, whether industry leads or uh, academia leads, it doesn't really matter. So that research island is a beautiful island wherein industry could park some of their guys over there, give them the freedom they don't get in the industry and uh, academia could park some of their researchers and say that, hey, I, I, you are free from your regular uh, stuff and you could look at the business and try and innovate. So I think that's the beautiful uh, sweet spot. Uh, both the parties could kind of jump into. Okay, Salim? Yeah, I agree with uh, Atul. You know, he said that point very nicely. Uh, you know, it is not important who leads, you know, whether the industry or academia. Finally, you should address the issues to the society. Okay. And, um, you know, uh, uh, for example, in, uh, in CPDM, hmm. we are currently offering courses at master's level hmm. in product design. And, uh, Many of our students are getting into in, in, a, uh, in a UX design, interaction design, and that is making us feel, you know, we need to, you know, uh, uh, you know, do that more, you know, in the education level itself. And we are uh, probably from next year going to offer courses in uh, UX design. Maybe when we go to expand this program, you know, uh, from product design, yeah. we are likely to introduce you know, uh, uh, UX design as one of the programs, mm -hmm. you know, that may happen in the very near future. So, depending on the, you know, demand from the industry, in okay. academia, we are offering programs to cater to the need. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Samir, you want to say something? Yeah, I just want yeah. to make one point. Uh, one second, one second. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'll just make one point. Uh, it was about the employability, right? Any designers who don't have a job today? There's, there is no problem, absolutely. You know, the demand is very high, the supply is very low, right? And, and the ugly part of industry, I'm coming on your side. <laughs> the ugly part of industry is the managers who are hiring these designers don't know what to look for themselves. You addressed a couple of concerns, you know, and uh, I'm so sorry, but I really have to, you know, hmm. address his concerns. And my, uh, the biggest thing I would like to 
uh, the most important thing I would like to point out is the fact that uh, r right now I see the industry is led, uh, you know, teams are being led, uh, design team heads are primarily people who are from engineering backgrounds or from MBA backgrounds. And that is what really, really strikes us as like, you know, how is that happening? We need more designers to be taking more lead roles. And at MIT, speaking from my institute, we are creating those leaders. It is our endeavor to create those leaders. And the next five years, all our students who are going out there, we are hoping that they will be, you know, leading these design teams. And that itself would, then you can say that, the, you know, the, 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 the ball is going to be in the other court. And it's, is it industry leading or is academia leading? It is going to be the students who are, you know, professionals who are leading. So how is it, okay. how is it any different? Thanks, Atsashka. Okay, quick. We'll, we'll, we have a, a few minutes left, so quick, quick questions, quick Hi. responses, and we'll try to get as many people sure. as possible. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, my name is Nikesh. Oh. Uh, I'm the fo founder of a startup called Events High. And uh, I come from an academic background with a PhD background, but now an industry in a startup. So uh, essentially, two questions. One is, as a startup, uh, it was great to see that you, we can throw challenges to students, but how can we share data? Right, we have hundreds of user interviews. Can we share that with the students because Se they second, have? What's your second question? So that's one. The second one is: Do you see there's a different need uh, for uh, startups versus large corporates in terms of education? Okay, so two questions: How does industry share data with uh, uh, in academia? Second is: that There's a difference in needs between startups and large. Uh, uh, corporations and how do you address those? Very quickly if you can address those. Okay, we do have a proper process as to how these projects are handled and uh, depending on you know how you uh, showcase your project or a brief to us, uh, we assign a team which, uh, which is the combination of mentors, faculty members and designers and uh, yeah that's how you can exchange your data it's it's a very very uh, if you want you know a non disclosure everything that all is taken care of so you don't really have to worry about that aspect second question uh, the second one was yes, uh, uh, large versus small how do you address the difference uh, you know the, the thing is that um, we actually uh, we promote our students and you know we have this, uh, big companies coming to us and who uh, pick up our students right away you know right from college itself when we have a placement uh, program happening uh, but we always tell our students, you know, to that look at these smaller companies, look at these startups, because that's where you're going to get to do really some good work. Yeah, but how do you, how do you treat them differently? Well, looking as one thing, how do, you, how do you address the needs differently? Is there a different approach you take? Uh, I think we give them the same platform as we would okay. give any big company. It's not like we differentiate, like, okay, you know, okay. this is... Okay, let's try to some, any other view. I'm sorry, we just want to go as quickly. Anybody else comments on that? From the data security side, I think the smaller companies are at an advantage because uh, they are not bound by all these stupid legalities. So if I want to present one of my case studies in a conference like this one, I will have to take up a couple of uh, approvals from my legal as well, simply because uh, in the US there have been number of cases wherein because I uh, showcased my products uh, in a particular way, there was a huge legal case and my company paid a couple of million dollars. So actually the smaller companies are at a much leisure, they don't have, they don't really care about all this stuff and frankly in my mind the more you share your new ideas, the more they will grow. So I don't think there should be a reason for you guys to be secretive about your uh, okay. ideas. Okay, let's take another question. There were lots of hands over there. Okay. Oh. Well, she's got the mic. Yeah. <laughs> So I have a question. Until yeah. a decade back, uh, I saw everybody wanted to be an engineer or a doctor. Now everybody wants to be a UX designer. It's a bubble which is rapidly growing and it is going to burst someday. So if the industry has really re realized the value of design, why don't I see that value in product design? Or why don't I see product design or furniture design or any other discipline of design growing as much as user experience design? And that to only in mobile apps or web platforms, if companies right, are really realizing okay, UX let's, design. Let's try to address that. So one, one is the claim that UX is a bubble, which some of you might take, uh, uh, <laughs> have different opinion. The second is, if there's so much design is, is, is such a big thing, how come we don't see evidence of it around us, right? If I, did I paraphrase So yeah, uh, one more concern here is very that, quickly, very yeah, quickly. very quickly I'll say. One more concern here is everybody wants to be a UX designer, an engineer today wants to be a UX designer, a developer wants to be a UX designer. What's your question? I don't say, see anything bad, but how do you realize that who actually has the passion to for user okay. experience okay. and so, wants so, to become so a UX let's designer? Have, so how do you shift them in terms of selecting? Uh, okay. So one, uh, according to me, uh, UX is not a bubble that will burst, it will, it will evolve. 
it is user experience now it will evolve into something okay what's else the next other uh, other question yeah the other question is uh, see we are we are now into as i was uh, talking yesterday into experiential zone you know brands themselves have become experiential and that is why ux as a term has grown so fast and startups have come in and there are a lot of uh, engineers and it, these are all technology led startups right so the uh, uh, technology people they understand the value of ux and that, that is why they are coming in to right now so this is a phase according to me and uh, it will evolve into something else maybe a couple of years later but it's the matter of keeping your, yourself updated and you know uh, growing with it yeah anyone else would like to speak to this yeah, i think it's just in a nutshell people are just going where the money is you know it's it's as simple as that like so, so us companies pay well all students irrespective of what you study product design that's true. fashion design uh, design management doesn't matter ux pays well i can pick up the skills by taking two courses mm -hmm. you know i'll i'll get into the ux discipline i'll become a ux designer the transformation is overnight so, so people just go where the money is yeah anybody else speak to that yeah. actually on the bubble side uh, i completely agree there was an internet bubble there was a product design bubble also a little small one in india but that was also there a couple of years back so you are completely right on the bubble side but that's life right i mean the life is kind of cyclical so we'll have to run with that for sure okay on the other side of the screening i believe it's very easy to talk about design just give them a design problem and you figure out whether i need this candidate or not okay salim yeah this field will keep in expanding until it is filled you know it will take time and it is not a bubble you know until the gaps are filled it will keep expanding and uh, ux is a big field where it's not only involving designers you know, de engineers can contribute to ux you know as engineers researchers can contribute as design uh, as researchers and so on and so forth so it is uh, it is a big spectrum where people of different kinds are required to contribute in this field you know not only as designers yeah and, and perhaps if there's any um, consolation in that your your design uh, training will not go waste no matter which field you eventually get into perhaps one more uh, quick question no no no, no. just oh, one yeah. quick question i'm sorry i'm really sorry yeah, yeah. go ahead yeah. 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 hey okay, we, we'll have to you know, that corner of the room hasn't been addressed. Okay, yes, go ahead. Did you got the phone? Oh, you got the microphone? Anybody? Yep. Until he gets a microphone, go ahead and ask. Hey, hi, this is Rishikesh hey, here. Uh, um, I'm a designer right now working for an IT company. Uh, my question right now, I mean, it's my observation that people are concerned with, I'm a designer from academy, I'm a designer from the industry, engineer, take it turn designer, non-take it turn designer. My concern is, do we really concern about what our qualification is or are we concerned with people who are sensitive to design people who are conscious about design and people who can really okay, make thanks. a difference so it, it doesn't it doesn't matter what your training is if you have the right attitude right skills and so on and so forth uh, not at all in fact uh, our company has people who were photographers and now they are doing ui ux so it's the design sensitivity as you said if a person is sensitive to design he has a place place in the industry i think no, nothing can stop them okay a question there go ahead Hi. one last question Just here one okay last here, here. Uh, it's faster than getting the microphone to you run 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 go ahead okay. ask the question Question. My name oh. is Leela. I'm a law teaching actually. Oh. So, are the academy, academy uh, really using any UX techniques uh, in recruiting the teachers, professors, whoever it is? Okay, go ahead. Thank you. So, is academia? Please, please ask question. Uh, I want to ask a specific question. Are industry and academia Wait. here? Was that, a, was that a comment or was that a question? Okay, okay. Uh, do, do you use any methods? Uh, your own method? Do you eat your own dog food, so to oh. speak? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I can't speak. Uh, you know, uh, looking at we have like about seven disciplines, disciplines, yeah. and you know there is a there is a vast experience. Thirty, 30 uh, seconds. So go ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, how, how do we choose our faculty? Is what you're saying? Uh, primarily, we look for people who are in the industry and who spent a considerable amount of time doing a certain kind of work and wish that they can lend their experience to to people, okay. uh, to the students. Uh, and the other part is. Uh, uh, I just kind of lost that one. What was it? No, do you, do, how do you recruit? And I think you've addressed yeah. it. Okay, yeah. good. Let's go to the, somebody who was uh, asking. People with experience. We people with real experience. We uh, we recruit people with real experience. Somebody was asking a question while the other. Yeah. Was it? Yes, go ahead. No. You have the microphone. What happened? 
Hello? Yeah. Sorry? Time to start. Okay. Come, 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 come. Okay, I have... Okay. Uh, I have a specific question like... Very quick, very yes, specific. Yes, yeah. go ahead. Are our industry and academia producing research paper which are specific to interaction design, cognitive psychology? Okay. If no, why? Okay, that's it. Okay, so basically this is probably related to what Sudhir asked too. So uh, have we invested, academia invested, are we mature enough, invested in research? Uh, to produce original research? Uh, we in are field. in the process, to be very honest. We've just launched a uh, you know, mm. UG program mm. uh, for UX, and we've just, our first batch of PG UX designers will be uh, you know, passing out in December. So you're most welcome. You know, we'll be, yeah. all the, it'll be all out there on the floor. Okay, the very good. So there is uh, some, there's something coming out of the pipe already. Yeah. Yes. Just a quick this? 30 seconds addition yeah. to that. So it's very, it's, it's, more, it's very popular in the IITs because yeah. They have that whole culture of research and you know professors and yeah. students working on yeah. on projects, participating in different conferences. Yeah. So it's very prominent then, and I would love it when you know all the other design institutes also follow suit. Okay, a, a, a industry. F okay, go ahead, Salim. Yeah. No, all the research is done in ergonomics, human factors, user research. They're all part of it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. So, so, so industry folks here, uh, we find in the West um, uh, very frequently industry, like for instance. Companies like Hewlett Packard investing in, in Stanford. Is there any move from industries here who have deep pockets to go in and say, here's, let's set up an XYZ company, Center for Design? Is, uh, is there any actually, such? Actually, the pockets are not deeper anymore. Yeah. Uh, uh, if, if a company is tracking uh, their own results on a quarter basis, yeah. it's very, very hard to invest. Okay. But most of the companies, I believe, are investing a little, yeah. though not enough for sure. Not enough for sure. OK, next question. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. So, do you believe that uh, design is dynamic? Just to the academia directly. What, what? Uh, is design dynamic? What do you mean by that? Is Could it ever changing? Is it changing? Okay. Ever changing. It's an organic process to begin. Right. So, other academia teachers that we have going out and getting updated with what is ever changing. Ah. Uh, yes, we are constantly engaged. Okay. Most okay. of the staff is engaged. We have up projects, and, you know, ongoing projects in the industry and sometimes we are uh, involved with projects in the industry with the students. So it's, we are very much hands on. I, I can speak from my institute. I can speak on behalf of many of my faculty members. Yeah. So good question. I would like to again repeat my offer of last year's uh, that academy, you know, teachers should come and do certain projects with us. We'd love that. We'd absolutely and we love would go that. and teach. Uh, but Samir, quick question. That. Do you, are you waiting for academias to come and ask you or are you reaching out to them and sending out invitations? We, we are already doing that. We are collaborating with a couple of design schools already, defining okay. their curriculum, so okay. impact at that level. Yeah. Uh, also, you know, kind of training the teachers as well okay. in terms of UX because there's probably a little understanding of that. So okay. we are reaching out already. We are doing our uh, bit. One question, a lot of design schools have emerged outside of our traditional bureaucratic hackneyed university system, which is way behind times. Is there any way in which you are influencing our traditional universities? I'm keep leaving Indian Institute of Science out of this. It is not a traditional university, okay? So I'll, I'll narrate a story. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, in 2003, hmm. uh, I went to University of Pune. Uh -huh. um, and there was a very eminent vice chancellor at that time, yeah. who is also an economist, who was also on the Indian panel of economists and we proposed to them yeah. that we will start a program of human factors engineering. Mm -hmm. We will take the responsibility and collaborate with outside universities with you know known people mm -hmm. um, and we'll do everything mm -hmm. for them. So the idea was welcomed mm -hmm. uh, but as soon as we went out it fizzled out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, uh, the old story. Okay, go ahead. Okay, w one question. Oh, somebody's here. got a phone. Yeah, uh, it's here. Who's that? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so one uh, industrial uh, problem here. When we do job, uh, job description, I mean, we always see UI, UX skill set in one. And how do we address that? <laughs> oh, is, is, this, is, is this the right forum for that? Or do you want to speak to that? Absolutely. I mean, okay. I would like to address a little bit of that. UI, UX doesn't go hand in hand. Yeah. UI is just an output of what we do, 80% of UX. So, again, you know, to my point of the ugliness of the industry where, you know, the people who are writing these job descriptions don't understand mm -hmm. and they want interaction designer, visual designer, HTML, everyone in the same. <laughs> I don't understand that. Okay. 
So may, may, maybe, maybe folks who are designers should spend time with these ignorant folks out there educating them. Maybe, you know? <laughs> okay, we have time for just one question. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm right here. I'm sorry? No, you, you had your chance. Somebody asked me. Hi, sorry. I wanted to pick up something. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. So while we, we were talking about uh, designing, uh, design being a dynamic uh, uh, and ever changing yeah. sort of uh, field, yeah. so uh, why do we have this notion that education stops at graduation? Or do you think, considering how everything's evolving and changing so quickly, yeah. uh, do we need continuous uh, training from uh, uh, as you're on the job? Do you does does industry support or uh, you know value uh, training while while on the job? Yes. folks, you know why do, why must it stop with yeah? Uh, you're you're absolutely right. Most of the industries do have very specific budgets for uh, upgrading my own skills. And it's an yearly budget. Almost every industries do have that, definitely. Okay, well, we've run out of time, folks. I'm sorry, we would uh, like to extend this for another half hour, but these folks are around. Please um, accost them, have discussions with them, right? I, I hope I'm not jumping the gun there. Thank you very much.